so hello everyone. So I bring here uh, <coughs> also a bridge, a zero bridge case study. Uh, I will try to fit in 10 minutes, so let's see. I will present firstly Breezer Group, which is the owner of this bridge. Then I will focus on the case study, the zero bridge in three main aspects. The survival monitoring system, the structure, the main bridge, and the assessment of the survey performance that was uh, <coughs> uh, done until now. Current steps towards efficient asset management that is currently being done uh, in my research. And finally, uh, try to present this case study already framed in this uh, integrated value of information analysis flow chart that was developed in the uh, workshop in Munich. And this case was used to do that brainstorming during the session. So Brisa, as a group, is one of the largest towed motorway operators in the world. It has concessions in the United States and Netherlands and India. It's based its headquarters in, in Portugal. Uh, in Portugal is the largest transport infrastructure group uh, and it's responsible for the management of transport infrastructures, roads and railways. And uh, they have already some investment on ACHM. Mainly they have two bridges, Soraya Bridge and Luziri Bridge that are located near of the capital, Lisbon. And in this case, I will present <coughs> the case study of the Lazira Bridge, which is this beautiful bridge uh, that I present on the right. So some uh, key aspects of the monitoring system. Uh, it is a permanent monitoring system that was installed during the construction. Um, it was a novel aspect at, the back at that time because the monitoring project was part of the, of the bridge project. It has approximately 400 sensors that measure di 10 different types of parameters and use three different acquisition systems uh, among static, dynamic, and optic uh, solutions. Just to give you an, uh, an idea of the dimension of the system, it has more than 10 kilometers of cable length. Uh, sample rate can up to 100 hertz. And just uh, a number, every year, Brisa has one million records more to use uh, and to support in the asset management of this bridge. In complement, and this was done during my PhD, it is a finite element model, very refined, very detailed, that we agreed in the last uh, conference uh, workshop, call it as a virtual bridge. So, uh, in terms of the structure, so it's a big bridge of 13 kilometers. Uh, it has substructures, uh, a pro uh, viaducts, uh, and the, the main bridge. The focus of this work will be in the main bridge, which is a cantilever construction. And in terms of the structural performance, it was done, as I said, a finite element model, very refined, that simulated since the construction of the first pile until a age of 100 years. What I show here is a time phased analysis done in Diana, which includes a detailed geometry, a detailed uh, material characterization, and the, the very detailed uh, time history of the bridge. So this is the bridge. It spans seven piers. And uh, based on this finite element model that was developed and using the data that was collected since the construction, uh, we were able to see that the measurements were quite in agreement with the, with the finite element model on the other way, or the, or the other way around, the finite element model. Uh, <coughs> interprets the, the data very uh, well, which offer to the owner confidence and go forward in this issue of ACGM. Uh, nevertheless, uh, for this specific type of bridges, so built by the cantilever method, it's quite the, the challenge is mainly uh, <coughs> predicting the trend over time of the, the deflections, okay? So what I presented are two predictions, one in red, other in green. And depending on the creep and shrinkage models that you use, you might have different trends, different slopes. So, and this is mainly due to some limitations that I will not be exhaustive here, but mainly related with uh, geometry and material modeling. For that reason, uh, I got a Marie Curie Fellowship, and I'm currently <laughs> integrating what I did in my PhD, mainly the structural analysis, with the reliability modeling where we want to get a more, let's say, uh, robust uh, predictions of these uh, deflections profiles over time. Uh, some work has been done. Uh, 
mainly in terms of the material model, Krupp and Schrinkers. We have been uh, applying Bayesian analysis uh, by using different Krupp and Schrinkers models. So not only the Eurocode model, but also others that are widely accepted for these uh, properties. Uh, as you can see in the graph below, we have a prior, which is very wide, broad. We have the function, the likelihood, and we can get, by using the Bayesian updating, uh, get a much more, let's say, narrow prediction for, in this case, creep deformations. So, also in complement, there is also another issue that for these effects of creep and shrinkage, uh, geometry aspect is also important because <laughs> different thickness will lead to different creep and shrinkage rates. So, there are some, some limitations on 1D finite element solution. So, we are developing also a 3D model uh, and try to compare how far these uh, deflections are sensitive to these different uh, model approaches. So with all this information that uh, I presented here briefly, this is the framework that was developed in Munich. Uh, quite complex, even for me that was there. I, I, oh, I, I, I think for you uh, it's even more difficult at this time to understand everything, but I tried to put things in a, in a way that what I present here is the flow chart was, was developed. What I will show you is how I fill in, or, or better, how, how we fill in, because this was done with the help of uh, all the colleagues at Tony Munich. So first of all, the knowledge on decision content. So we agree that decision maker is a private company. Additional stakeholders involved could be the state users, insurance companies. Uh, the owner wants to minimize costs or maximize income if there are tools, which is the case. Constraints might be the budget, functionality, serviceability in terms of limit states <laughs> according to Eurocode thresholds uh, and inspection times. Uh, and also because this bridge is a landmark, it's one of, if I'm not wrong, is the second longest bridge in Europe. Also to ensure reputation of Brisa in terms of that they are in the cutting edge <laughs> of uh, asset management. Um, in terms of asset information, I will not read all of this, but as you saw in the presentation, we have a lot of information, a very detailed characterization of everything that is related with this uh, bridge. The objectives that were uh, defined in the Munich workshop is that is to minimize operation costs on the other side could be maximize the income, the tolls, and avoid uh, reputation loss because it is a huge asset. Uh, in terms of what is the optimization problem, uh, how we, fo we could formulate the objective function is based on performance, uh, like cost resilience uh, to minimize or maximize the cost of those What could be, in this case, the remedial actions taking into account that we are talking about excessive reflections? like in F1 when it goes to, we are back. Is it okay? Okay. So the remedial actions related with these excessive deflections for this specific type of bridges was <coughs> mainly defined in three actions. Do nothing, okay. Strengthening, mainly, which is usually in this case additional per stressing, or in also to reduce traffic speed if the deflections are quite excessive for so the comfort of the users. Uh, in this case, because we have monitoring, uh, we identified which information uh, is available. So as you saw, we have a lot of data in terms of strains, rotations, bearing displacements. In complement, as uh, usual, they have visual inspection data, mainly mapping of cracks on concrete. Uh, and the indicators that were uh, explored uh, in, in this brainstorm uh, could be strains on concrete at piers and deck, the rotations in the deck near of the supports, deflections at mid-spans, 
from the virtual bridge because uh, although this bridge has sensors to measure deflections, this remains a, <coughs> a research issue that is measuring long-term deflections uh, on concrete bridges. Displacement uh, bearings and the, the crack size, okay? So, and finally, how we could uh, assess the performance. And as you saw in that graph that I present with two predictions, one green line and red <coughs> line, it's mainly by assessing the rate of the deflection over time. So depending how we change the input variables, how these slopes might change, okay? More information about this work. There are a lot of information about this bridge in the literature. And thank you for your attention. Yes, uh, in terms of uh, deflections, we have, uh, it's not uh, quite specific, the Euro code, in terms of limited deflections. It's mainly, uh, uh, it imposes a maximum that is related with the span length over a certain ratio. Um, but this is not something that, from what I know, there is no agreement between codes. Euro code or the United States, they change in term a lot in terms of what is the value. Um, but yes, yeah. we need to teach. Very good. Thank you.